Dime a ver, que lo que. What is up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name's Shakira, and today we're gonna be talking about a conversation that has been pretty relevant in my life lately, and I think it could be for a lot of people as well. So, the topic that I wanted to discuss today is work life balance, and this is something that I've also personally helped people out with because maintaining a work life balance is something that's pertinent to everybody, I believe, especially in this day and age where. The majority of us are not only working nine to five jobs, but a lot of people are also taking time to work on their dreams and their aspirations and their goals whenever they come home from work too. And on top of that, maintaining a family, maintaining a healthy social life, and dedicating time to your hobbies, all of that put together can be pretty stressful. So hopefully I can give you some tips that you can take and apply to your own life. A big reason why maintaining a work-life balance is important is because it's going to open doors for you. You're going to have less stress, less burnout, and more mental clarity. So what exactly is a work-life balance? Um, it doesn't just mean dividing the hours in your day. And a work-life balance also doesn't mean just checking things off of your list. Having that healthy work-life balance means getting things done not only in your professional life, but still having the time and the energy, most importantly, to do things in your personal life too. So there are four main things that I'm gonna go over that I want you to take note of. And the first is that there is no such thing as a perfect work-life balance, like at all. I've tried this time and time again to create the perfect schedule and to rewrite my daily routine and to go back and perfect and revise and just keep creating routines when in reality it's going to be very hard to stick to a routine that's going to look the same every single day life just doesn't work that way and we're always going to be hit with different things that come to us at different times so it's not always going to be feasible to stick to a daily schedule and still have time to you know do everything that you want to do because some days you will have more time than others and other days you will it, it, it just might seem like everybody needs your help in that same day and everything that i'm saying i'm also saying this to myself because i'm somebody that struggles really hard with perfectionism and striving for unrealistic goals in my day-to-day -day life that it can be pretty upsetting whenever you write out that perfect daily routine and then you don't stick to it and i can attest to this it will upset you so with that basically i want to remind you to be accepting of life's fluid state i know that's probably not what you want to hear but when setting a daily goal ask yourself first is that goal realistic then understand that life changes and therefore your needs are going to change subsequently so like don't stress yourself out so you can have a plan but strive to follow that plan with at least a variance of like five percent to give yourself that leeway if things don't always go as planned second i need you to understand that your mental health comes first and i am really big talking at myself when i say this that nothing fucking matters more than your mental health okay not your job not your toxic relationship not your friends either if there is something that is causing you stress in your life and it, it just needs to be removed from your life exercise that power to remove it And with mental health, I think that we have a tendency to push ourselves to the point of exhaustion and not really considering our mental state during the process. So if you need to do something before actually starting your work, or you need to do something in the middle of your work or right after, whatever that may be for you, if you need to pray, if you need to meditate, if you need to go on a walk or whatever it is for the benefit of your mental health, then go ahead and do it. Because remember, you can't give energy to the work that you're doing or the projects that you're working on if you're not giving energy to you. And if mental health is something that you struggle with, maybe consider building a solid foundation which is going to be your mental health before you actually start building on top of that, which is going to be like 
your job or money or your relationship. So you need to have a solid foundation, your mental health, before you start building on top of it, everything else. Third thing, when it comes to maintaining a work-life balance, you wanna get rid of that perfectionism. Perfectionism is a crippling disease and it can lead to unnecessarily longer days. It's that crippling cycle that distracts you from moving on to the next thing. So to beat perfectionism, decide and define what excellence looks like for you. That might be a few notches below perfect. So just remember that striving for perfection is not always realistic, but striving for excellence, which is different for everybody, is realistic. And that's something that maybe it would be more attainable for you to do. Bouncing off of the first point, knowing that life isn't perfect is going to allow you to move your focus off of the small shit, the things that don't matter, and focus more on the bigger picture. I was somebody who would really get stuck in perfectionism on a day-to-day -day basis because in what I was working, which was online through social media, it's really easy to compare yourself to other content creators who are out there. And so whenever somebody did something that I liked and I couldn't reproduce, not the same content, but like content that's similar to the same degree that they would, being that even though people have so many different backgrounds than you do or so many different levels of experience and maybe there was just some things that I had to learn over time and with time I would eventually find my style but having that unrealistic expectation of what perfection meant to me and what a good job meant to me i feel like it really put me back in my progress and i'm sure a lot of people can relate and something i always had to remind myself was that nobody was going to be judging the things that i made the content that i created harder than myself so at the end of the day like the little details that you might be focusing on for others they probably don't matter. That leads me right into the fourth point and the last point for today is to structure your days and prioritize. When in the day are you the most efficient and the most productive? Maybe you could capitalize on that time and um, save the things that require more brain power or more effort for you to do during this time. This might also mean performing an audit of your day. Are you spending time on things that you actually care about or do you find yourself constantly getting distracted by anything online, on social media, in front of you, um, if you have responsibilities around the house? Also, another problem that I found myself falling into was thinking that things were important that I did before handling my business. An example of this would, would be like, I had to wash all the dishes and make sure the dog was walked, make sure the dog was fed, X, Y, and Z, and the other thing all before I actually sit down to make a video or sit down to do whatever the whatever the work was. Are you able to delegate those tasks that you think, or they, I mean, honestly, they might be important, but for example, if you have children, is your partner or is um, a relative able to watch your children while you do the work that you have to do for one or two hours a day? Are you able to hire a babysitter or put them in daycare? These are just like some things that you could consider that'll help you find the time in your day to prioritize on your aspirations. A tip to perform an audit on your day is to look at everything that you do in the day and give it a rating between one and five. One being least important or not important and five being very important. Maybe anything below a three, you can either decide to do it last or you can delegate it if that's within your world of possibilities. If you can delegate a task that's gonna help take some of the weight off of your back and in my eyes if somebody is important to me then that also means that their dreams for themselves and their goals are also important to me maybe not in this at the same degree that they are important to that person but because i care about that person i would be willing to help them out and that's the great thing about building strong relationships and um, having a strong support system by your side. I know not everybody has access to that, but there are lots of resources available online to find any help if you may need it. So just remember that when everything is important, nothing is important. And if you have a lot of things to do, chances are you probably won't do any of it. I am guilty of that. 
So decide on the things that are actually important and get those done first before anything else. So that was it for this video. I hope you were able to get some helpful tips from it. If you did, please leave a comment and let me know or if you have some tips that you'd want to share uh, with everybody else. Oh, quick shout out to my brother Nigel at Iconic Unlimited for this grateful t-shirt. I will leave a link to the website in the description of the video below if you want to go check out the store. Well, that was all I had for you today. If you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like, a dislike, comment, share, or subscribe. And subscribe. And subscribe. Don't forget to do that one. It really helps me out a lot. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. I appreciate life. Y hablamos martes. Doses! <laughs>